Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and of course I've got some stuff to share with you today. Um, this is going to be a weird one. I just picked up a, I picked out a bunch of random stuff really. Uh, I don't have too much current items, but uh, well a couple of things, a couple of things. I've got uh, a poster cars, so I've been, I've been loving this little brand, these uh, poster cars. So I got another one here. This is a... Uh, Aston Martin Valkyrie. I did not have uh, any version of this particular tooling from them. I actually picked this up a while ago and now we'll show it to you. So pretty cool. So another poster cars. And then we've got a couple of mini GT. Big fan of that brand, as you guys know. We've got the Lamborghini Huracan STO in blue Lafoy. Lafoy, Lafoy, yeah, I do not know. Almost looks golfish in the orange and blue but looks pretty cool to me. And then we've got the BMW M4 GT3. Pretty cool. Liquid Molly. Pretty slick. <clears throat> so a couple of mini GTs to look at. Um, I got a couple of Ultra Reds in the mail, of course, because of my good friend, Dicastrum. It's kind of been how he's been paying me for... Uh, for hubbing for him here in the U.S. these days, so I can't complain about that. But these two will complete this series for me. So yes, I've got another full series of Auto World videos in the tank, which is uh, the twenty. This is a uh, what is this? Jeez, twenty twenty two release two, and this is a weird set. It's a, it's a super weird set, and it's weird because there are some weird ultra red variations. I'm not going to get into that now, but. This is the vet that I was missing, and then this is the Mustang that I was missing. There's no variation on the Mustang. There's a weird variation with the vet, and now I got those two. So that's sweet, and that will complete that series. So stoked to do that video when I do. That one I'm actually really excited to do just because of the oddness of it. Um, I did find two things in store. I found this 1974 Volkswagen Type 181 in this Matchbox Volkswagen series. So this is strange. And I'm gonna tell you why this is strange. Um, there were like a hundred of these there and a hundred of the Volkswagen Beetle 4x4, which I did not pick up, and nothing else from the set. So are they releasing these in cases of just two castings? Because that's what it seems like. At least in my area, that's what it seems like. We got a ton of these and we got a ton of that uh, four by four and there's still a lot of the four by four hanging there. I think this one got grabbed uh, Looks good. The card art looks good. Just weird. They're releasing it Like they are so <clears throat> that's interesting. Let me know what you guys are finding in your area Then I picked up a majorette. I picked up a majorette at uh, at Walmart as well I got these this Porsche 934 funny thing is I already have this car, but I did not have it with the rubber wheels I've got it with some like generic looking wheels. I've got it in the exact same color and everything But not with uh, rubber wheels. So pick that one up um, That is it for store finds Just those little two items really nothing and then uh, I got some stuff some of the stuff I picked up at the old Hot Wheels convention as I've been peppering the stuff in uh, some of this other stuff I've had for a while, but we're, I picked out some other kind of oddball things to open. So that's going to be the fun, actually, of this video for me. Um, we got this diecast super convention, Ed Roth, Auto World, 83, 4x4, Silverado, and 83 Silverado, weird combo piece here. Odd thing, square bodies, yay. Um, Auto World, yeah. And uh, with the trailer. But uh, just a goofy Ed Roth, Roth thing. We're going to open that up. And I've had it for a little bit. <clears throat> I've got a Racing Champions Mint Gold Strike in this van. I picked that up. I believe I picked this one up at the convention. But this thing's really cool. Got this neat van. So we're going to open up a Gold Strike. We're going to open up this Racing Champions uh, Authentic Fire and Rescue Vehicles, 1930s to the 1990s, Elmwood Park, Illinois Fire Department. Pretty neat. Weird one. That's kind of neat. Uh, this really cool Matchbox Collectibles, 100 years of Ford, Ford Focus. 
This is a really nice looking detailed model. There are some really good older Matchbox models that are very, very detailed. This would be one of them. And it is pretty sweet. So we're going to we're gonna look at that as well. Um, let's see. And then I got some Johnny Lightnings. We will check out these Johnny Lightnings. I got a Go and Goat. This one I got from my buddy Dicastrum. He's been getting a bunch of stuff shipped to my house. And like occasionally he gets something. Like he gets he buys like lots of stuff. And then he gets some stuff. Some of the stuff I'm going to show you I actually picked out from there. I'm like, hey, can I? I'm interested in these. Uh, so I was interested in this one. So go and go, Johnny Lightning. Um, but I'll show you actually the other stuff I picked up from him real quick. We got two GT40s. Classics one and a mainline one. We got a Ferrari F40 in the Decades line. Love that Ferrari F40 or F40. Ferrari F40. Did I say Ferrari F40? Pontiac Fiero. Pontiac Fiero. Wow. All right. Got that. Um, Mercedes 300 SL. I think this is a Corgi casting. That's why I wanted that one. And I don't think I had an example of it. So that's nifty. And then a uh, Chevy Lumina minivan. I didn't have it with this wheel variation. So I needed that. So that's cool. And then lastly from him, this one is really sweet. And I can't believe he actually just let me have it. I noticed that he picked up two of these, one on card and one loose. And uh, this is an old 80s Hot Wheels Real Riders Mercedes SL. And I did not have this for my Real Riders collection. So, and this is minty fresh. Very, very cool. So thank you so much for parting ways with one of the two that you picked up. And allowing me to add this to my collection because I have a lot of the 80s real riders. They're like all right here. And I did not have this casting. This is one that I was missing. So stoked on that for sure. Then we've got just some Johnny Lightning, some random Johnny Lightning that I picked out. Actually, my daughter technically got this one for me for my birthday. She picked it off the pegs for me for my birthday. Lotus Esprit S1. Very cool. And then... I just got some other random stuff. We've got a Volkswagen Beetle. We've got this Pontiac GTO. And we've got this old Cutlass on a smash package. Kind of look at it like that. So, yeah. And that's that's it. we got about 20 cars or so, really, though, to look at and to open up. So, it should be a fun one, I think. Uh, to look at some of this, some of the odd old stuff. Sometimes that's just my favorite stuff to kind of look through and get. I mean, I love the new stuff, obviously, too, but old stuff is, uh, and unique stuff is definitely where it's at sometimes. But pose for a thumbnail quick, huh? I know that's your favorite part of the video. So, all right, let's do that. Let's flip the camera around. Let's get to cracking this stuff open. All right, so let's uh, start with the poster cars. I actually unwrapped cellophane before uh, before this part of the video. You should be proud of me. So this is number 11 in the series. Aston Martin, Valkyrie, scale 164 in Skyfall, silver. Comes in an acrylic case. I've talked enough about this brand, really. They don't, like, send me anything. So, you know, it's nothing like that. Whatever. I just, uh, I've been really impressed with price point and uh, what you get for the price point. You get an acrylic case. You get a very detailed model. It's licensed. Um, seems to be fairly widely available on eBay, so you don't really have to worry about trying to get them. <clears throat> At least not yet. I don't know. We'll see how the popularity of this brand uh improves over time not really sure if they have plastic bases rubber tires metal body details all over including um inserted details for headlights and taillights and they roll quite well they typically do have the uh, brakes discs visible through the rim which is another nice touch and they roll actually really well. They feel pretty lightweight because obviously without a metal base, they're gonna feel pretty lightweight. This one also has a plastic top 
as well. So they use plastic and metal pieces, but it's majority of it, I guess, majority of the body anyway is metal. Not much body here, but in this particular model, but they're pretty impressive. And I, I do like them quite a bit. Um, I don't know if necessarily if I'm going to go after every single one. I may get a, at least one of each tooling that they put out. That might be how I collect this brand, and that's how I collect some other brands. So that would be in line uh, to maybe do that. Uh, so that's pretty neat there. All right. <clears throat> Let me know what you guys think about the poster cars. I mean, I, I think a lot of people are digging them. A lot of people are digging the price point on um, all that stuff. Now, Mini GT, definitely a step above, I'm going to say, with quality-wise. Even though they don't have some of the details that Poster Cars has, such as like the disc brakes, stuff like that. Um, but they are metal on metal, and there are some more, they're, you know, more detailed liveries and, and stuff like that. So Mini GT, definitely a favorite brand of mine. And they come with the boxes that I really dig for storage. This is an IMSA licensed model very cool mini gt don't really need to save this because there's a clamshell thing inside of that box that will help with storage but yeah i mean their details on their like liveries are just pretty fantastic the inserted details for headlights inserted details for taillights um, whatever little extra parts and pieces, they put a ton of care into their models and it shows and their models typically all roll as well, which is another, uh, win for them. So very, very cool. This is a neat one. Um, definitely like it. I don't know if I would get a lot of this particular casting or tooling, but, uh, this one definitely suffices as a good example. So digging that. Definitely think that that's pretty cool. So Mini GTs are fantastic. They photograph beautifully. They're very well scaled, uh, proportioned. They're done very, 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 very well. And Lamborghinis, Mini Genie, Mini Genie, Mini GT does a fantastic job with Lambos. So let's get this one open. box numbered they're sequentially numbered as they come out so they've had a lot of releases they've had a lot of releases they started out pretty slow when they first came out and then they just you know caught fire these mini gts and uh i think they started with like what a civic or something like that they started with a pretty bland casting at least bland to me but now they just put out Kind of hit after hit, as far as I'm concerned. Wow, that is such a low profile tire. Look at that thing. Man, both of them, the back one too. So, this is a pretty cool looking Lambo. Orange and blue. We got the carbon fiber wing there. And again, oh, this one. Doesn't want to roll quite as well. Maybe that's because the tire's so low profile. Oh, and it's slightly off the rim. Actually, it's got a slight issue with it. Ooh, we got a quality control issue with the Mini GT, which is something I don't come across very often. Now, I've heard that they exist from some people, but this tire has some issues. I'll just pull it off here. And it may be recoverable. It looks like when it got put onto the rim, it got like kind of sliced and folded under. Uh, is that something I can sort of fix to get it to roll? Mm, maybe. But that is, I mean, you almost might, you don't even need the, the tire with how low profile the tires are. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get that back on there. It's very, very thin. As I've already mentioned. Come on, you guy. All right. There we go. Much better. Still got that little 
a little crack in the tire right there. Not noticeable on display at all, though, at least, and uh, that's good enough for me. Still, it is a quality issue. We do point those out on this channel uh, as often as I see them or notice them. But very, very cool. It, it looks really awesome. And like I said, Mini GT does these Lamborghinis just really, really well. All right. <clears throat> Moving on from there. <clears throat> what should we do next? Let's do let's do this Auto World Monstrosity. Now, Auto World is another one of my favorite brands, but I just don't really... I would never have got this if I wasn't such a f completionist. You know what I mean? I'm such a completionist with Auto World, it just kind of forced me to have to buy some stuff sometimes that I don't really want, and then I go through kind of like a weird existential crisis with uh, collecting. When... Uh, Sometimes, though, if you want it all and you want examples of everything and you're trying to, I don't know, why am I doing it? I don't know. <clears throat> I love the brand. This isn't one that I was uh, super excited about. It's cool. Nuclear Minds design is cool. They do great artwork, all that good stuff. The We are a little square bodied out and they have slowed down. Okay. So the square bodies definitely have slowed down. They do not put out nearly as many of these as they used to. And for a lot of you, that's a good thing. But they were definitely hot for a while. So let's look at this thing. It's got like an Easter theme almost going on to me. Very pastel colors. Kind of weird for Ratfink. Ed Roth. And the Ed Roth licensing with, like, Ed Roth all over and Ratfink all over, I'm just not like, okay, wow, that's really cool. I, I just, I'm not that into it. Okay, as cool as Ed Roth may be, I just, uh, you know. I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Is this something cool to you? Uh, this would never sit flat on here, I don't think. So if we put this in, there we go. So that's never going to work. The trailer hitch is not, if the trailer wants to sit level, that's what we'd be looking at. So, and that alone just kind of makes it a, a kind of a goofy set, right? I don't know. What do you guys think about this? I got it for the trucks. I really don't care about the trailer, but obviously I'm going to keep the trailer because it's part of the set. Um... Go ahead and just store those in there. That is a neat feature of this, by the way. Because those ramps just store right in there. So we'll keep those in there so they don't get lost. And that's it. I mean, I, yeah, the artwork's kind of neat. But, you know, as far as hobby exclusive square bodies go, these are not, not, definitely not the top of the list for me. All right. I guess I'll just leave it there. Next thing we can look at here is a Majorette, this Porsche 934. And first glance, I mean, it looks pretty cool. Majorette, again, is kind of hit or miss, and a lot of the times it's the wheels that leave a lot to be desired. This casting for Majorette, I think, has been around for quite a while. You get a little card here in the packaging. I do like that these are showing up at Walmart now gives you another choice on the pegs to check out. Yeah, this is pretty cool, actually. So you get opening doors with this particular model. Majorette has more uh, opening, yeah, opening doors on a lot of their castings, or quite a few of them anyway. Uh, it's in 157 scale. It's got this Majorette suspension, which is kind of a cool, fun feature. And with the rubber tires paired with it, it's kind of neat. Doors shut really well and don't have, have some really good panel gappage there. Not bad. And we got inserted details for a headlight, which is really part of the window piece. Kind of a common thing for diecast manufacturers to do with Porsches in particular. Kind of a basic de uh, detail on the back for the lights. It's not quite 100% lined up perfect, but it is what it is. And then again, we got the rubber tires. And the wheels look pretty cool. They look pretty cool. They may look a little bit too large for the car. So they may look slightly out of portion, proportion. Maybe with it dropped like that, it looks a little better. I don't know. The thing rolls very, very smoothly, though. For these rubber tires and the suspension. Yeah, I'm digging it. I think it's a cool little piece. 
<clears throat> the color though, I mean, it kind of goes good. You could get your trailer down here. It uh, kind of clashes a bit. But uh, yeah, very cool. Porsche, Porsche from Majorette. What else do we got? We got this guy, Matchbox, Volkswagen, type 181. Again, the card art on these is pretty cool. Here's the rest of the set that uh, I think eventually we will see. So I have not seen any of this except for that and that. Uh, the other ones I would be excited about, I don't know, I'd probably pick up all of them, to be honest with you. The card art is really nice, though we're about to destroy it. Kind of reminds me of the Porsche set card art, which I have not seen any of that Porsche set at all. None. Zip zilch. And it leads me to think, I mean, and I don't think, so when these, I saw these, I'm like, oh, someone just picked them over. When I'm like, no, they didn't. There's no way somebody picked out all the Carmen Gears and whatever, and the, and the Beetle and the Mark 1 and left behind this in an equal number of four by fours. It just didn't make any sense. And so they must have came out in a two-car case. It had to be. Or maybe they're coming out in, like, straight packs, and they only got two of them. Weird distribution either way. But this one's in pearl white, and I think it looks pretty clean, pretty nice. Matchbox does a great job with the basics. And this is no exception. It's a nice version of this casting. It looks really good in white. Uh, I, probably one of the better versions that have ever come out of it. How long has this casting been around? Copyright date 2007, so a while. And then sticking with Matchbox for a minute. Let's look at this thing. I wish they would put out something of this quality again. Now this is not to scale, it's, it's large, but uh, 2000 Collector Edition. 2000 Ford Focus Matchbox Collectibles with an eBay logo on it. It's got eBay licensing. It's like, hey, buy this and sell this on eBay. Isn't that weird? Why would I have an eBay license? I don't understand that. It's like, hey, resell your crap on eBay. Just, you know, I'm telling you. The die cast companies are in bed with the scalpers. This has some weird rubber band residue that might have been around this that held this to the car. So, get that out of here. And then, oh, we got some tape on the bottom. We're just going to do that. Comes with this little display platform. It appears to be... Set them on the side, and you can also stack them. Pretty cool. Ooh, is that suspension? It's got suspension. I think... Yeah, that's got some matchbox suspension going on. So it's got one of those little leaf springs inside of there. So this is pretty highly detailed. It looks pretty nice. It's not to scale. It's large. But this reminds me, in these wheels, it reminds me of the Pontiac Vibe that I have that is a similar quality to this from Matchbox. But I think it's a cool piece. you got the multicolor interior... You've got, you know, nice graphical details for the headlights. Not quite up to the par of the current graphical details that uh, Matchbox does on their headlights. But you do got these nice rubber tires with tread. I'm surprised they don't use these wheels at all anymore. It's a pretty nice looking wheel. Probably because... Is it a... Yeah, it's a weird wheel, the way that they put this together. The rubber is like around the axle. I don't know. It's a strange wheel. The way that it's constructed. And that's probably why they don't do it anymore. It's not a simple, like, real rider. As you can see, you don't see the axle through here. It's almost like a Johnny Lightning wheel in that regard. But very cool. So I like this. I think this is a good basic, well, sort of basic, collector edition matchbox. I think it's uh, quite detailed, and I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. All right, moving on, we've got this guy, the Racing Champions Fire and Rescue USA, Elmwood Park, Illinois Fire Department. Let's look at this guy. Um, one of 9,999. Couldn't they have just made one more? Rounder up to 10,000. 
Couldn't they have? Sirens blazing. Lights are blazing. Someone call for help. All right, let's go ahead and uh, cut this open. I just didn't have a version of this casting, and I thought this was a pretty decent looking one, so I'm like, well, let's pick it up. Whoa. Uh. Check it out. Shift Commander. Here we got an opening hood with some details underneath there. Looking all right. Uh, the light bar is just like a painted reflective surface, so it's not like a clear or, you know, transparent in any way. So you, you got that. And then um, I like the, the way they did the rims on the Chevy Caprice. It's got uh, probably an authentic livery, I would assume. One of these predate Hot Pursuit cars from Greenlight, so this might have been like your best option back in the day for authentic uh, police and fire vehicles. And all in all, pretty neat. I'm actually kind of surprised Greenlight hasn't done this casting. They haven't, right? I don't think they have. So, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that they have not done it. Kind of shocked, actually. It's probably coming. It's probably coming. But for now, you got this. You got this Racing Champions if you want a Caprice Classic. That's pretty cool. So I like that. It's not bad. We've got this weird, like, mirrored finished Racing Champions base. Which a lot of them had. Kind of like chrome painted. It's very lightweight for being metal on metal. And some of these older racing champions, I mean, they did suffer from some metal fatigue. So this one's in good shape, though. Rims look good. Everything looks pretty good on it. So happy with that little purchase. Again, we're going through some oddities today. Just some weird stuff. Kind of laid back. Looking at this stuff. Well, let's look at this guy real quick. Might as well. I'm getting the other stuff piled up here. Uh, laid back Saturday. Pulling out this guy. So this is actually a really sweet piece. And I'm I'm really glad to have gotten it. I haven't really hunted these down in a while. So I have no idea what the actual value is of this car. But I know, I'm pretty sure they don't go cheap. He must have got it. He got it in a lot of loose uh, Mercedes uh, 380 SELs. And this was in there. And then immediately I saw after he also got a carded one that was in pristine, like the cards in crispy condition. So I'm like, hey, yo, let's talk. You get the dog in there looking out. Nice touch on the interior there. Goodyear Real Rider tires. This is the original Real Riders. And just a really cool piece that I did not have in my collection. It's one of the few castings I don't have for the Real Riders collections. There are a couple that are going to be really difficult to get. But uh, this is one that I did not have, and I am definitely happy to finally have it. So that is really neat. Just real basic, you know. There's nothing really much to it, except for that it's got real riders. There's no, like, tampo on it, or graphic on it whatsoever. The grill is actually a separate piece of plastic. The interior is tan, and then the base is metal, the body is metal. And this is going to go great in my little vintage Real Rider collection. So very stoked on that. All right. Chevy Lumina minivan. Yes. This thing's sweet. Taxi. I have it in the other wheel variation, which would be like a black wall. This one is the five spoke. I did not have that. And there you go. Now I do. Opened her up. It's it's a goofy looking minivan, right? I want Auto World to do this one. I think they should. You should definitely do the Lumina. Do it. It's such a weird, like space looking space vehicle looking minivan. I think they were so cool. And uh I mean so cool. It's so ugly. They're like, you know, of course, like the just like an 80s or 90s vision of the future kind of looking thing. 
and they were trying to look futuristic. And I guess in a way, it still does look a little futuristic, right? But it's got that, uh, I don't know how to explain it. But you guys get what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. It's got uh, headlights, which are part of the window piece. Always like when they do that. Mention it every single time. It is a one rivet construction casting that the body hooks into the back of the base back here. And it got a re released only a handful of times, and I think this is the last one I needed, and now my collection of this beautiful Lumina minivan is complete. So there we go. Achievement unlocked with that one. Let's see here. This is a fun one. Pontiac Fierro. I mean, Ferrari F40. I like this casting from Hot Wheels. I think they did a good job proportionate-wise with this. This is another one, though, I would like to see, like, Auto World do. Someone else do it. Oh, it's got packaging rub on the window. Or window. The mirror. I got most of that off, but it did nick the paint a little bit right there. Oh, well. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. This is kind of a throwback to an original livery i think on this fiero from an older hot wheels i think there was one that looked pretty much just like this maybe a little bit different hue but this general design and it's a metal on metal base anytime uh, i see a variation of this casting that i don't otherwise have i do try to pick it up as well i like the fiero the fiero is really cool my uncle had one right when they came out and um, I thought it was like the coolest thing ever when I was a kid. I'm like, wow, that is such a cool looking sports car. And it's only two seats. And wow, it's super neat. And they are kind of cool. They're not like super cool. But they, you know, for that time, uh, the fact that they had like what, like a fiberglass body or whatever it was. They were like, oh, that's cool too. They can't like dent. They're like Rubbermaid or whatever. Something like that. <laughs> whatever I thought when I was younger. Uh, but yeah, this uh, Fiero. Fiero is a cool car from my childhood, and I, I just think they're neat. And they are neat. So I wouldn't mind owning one today, actually. Get one that's completely, you know, rust out. That would be that would be fun. That would be fun for me. All right. Mercedes 500 SL. This, I want to say, is a Corgi casting. You can tell just by the way that it is. And what I mean by that is Corgi castings are generally wide compared to regular Hot Wheels. At least they have a, a generally a wider appearance. See what I mean? They're usually a little bit larger. Mostly in the width, but also sometimes in the length. And I'm pretty sure, and they're made in China too. That's the other usually cue. I'm pretty sure this started its life as a corgi. Not a dog as uh, the other diecast company. This one's also got uh, inserted details for uh, headlights, which are part of the window piece, which I like. Pretty basic model. I just, anytime I see the Corgi casting stuff, I try to get like one of every tooling of that. I don't know why. I just, and I think this is a Corgi. I could be wrong. If this was originally a Corgi tooling, but I'm pretty darn sure it is. Just by the way that it's shaped and it's made in China uh, and all that jazz. Weird era of Hot Wheels indeed. I think it's a pretty good basic model, though. I don't think that that can be argued with, really. It's a nice little basic model. So, you guys, let me know what you think on that one. What else we got? What else do we got? We got two more Hot Wheels, and then we're into Johnny Lightning for the rest of the video. Two more Hot Wheels. GT40. Okay, I collect this casting too. This is another casting that, again, if there's a variation of it, I don't have it. I see it. I remember. I'm able to, like, comprehend that I don't have it. Or I'm able to at least check a spreadsheet that's been updated that tells me I don't have it. I go ahead and pick it up. And uh, so that would be this one, and that would also be this one. And that is, again, assuming that they are priced right. Because I do not go out of my way. You know, when you start getting down to the nitty gritty and say I was only missing one or two and I'd start pay paying a little bit more money for the, the ones I was missing just to have the collection finally complete. This is not the best GT40 casting that is out there from any die cast manufacturer by any means or even close to that. However, 
it's still kind of a cool one. And I don't know, for some reason, I collect it. A while back, when I started collecting Hot Wheels and I got, you know, further than just main lines and stuff, I kind of picked out some castings that I was going to collect, that I was going to get all of. And this remains on the list. So it's still there. It's still one that I do go after from time to time. And maybe one day I will do a video and show you all the ones I have. Again, I don't like go actively searching eBay, trying, 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 trying to complete the collection. It just kind of happens naturally as I come across. Otherwise, I would already have this one probably. Um, I would probably already have both of them, but it just, as I naturally kind of come across things and they become available and they're not expensive, and in this case, they were basically free, um, I go ahead and add them to the collection. <clears throat> and that's the way I, I collect a lot of the stuff I collect. Kind of a lazy way to do it, but I'll tell you what, it saves you some money, saves you some time, actually. Well, not time in completing the collection, but saves you some time hunting, which is nice. Uh, the Going Goat. This is a older red card Johnny Lightning copyright date on this guy is 2000. So pretty old now. This casting's kind of goofy, but it's a GTO. So had to have it. I've got a couple other variations of it, but I didn't have it in this beautiful teal-ish pink green, minty green color combination, which is just fantastic for this car. And metal body, metal base, plastic tires. Probably screams downhill in a downhill race. It's got those Johnny Lightning wheels that have just a little, little edge that they ride on. So probably fast. And it's heavy. Very heavy. All right. The rest of these. Oh, you know, I did have one non-Johnny Lightning that I almost forgot about. Which is this 1975 Chevrolet van from Racing Champions Mint. One of 2,000 pieces, but this is the gold strike. So likely 2% of the production line. Not many of these out there. But not that expensive to acquire because there's not that many people out there that are just like going after gold strikes. So I got this pretty cheap. Those glorious horses. So it's all gold. Gold base. Gold rim wheels things it's very close to the original ver the original the regular non-chase version is brown like me metal flake brown what is that there's a weird little quality issue right there in the wrap there's a bubble so that's how you can tell how they do this it's like a wrap almost they put on these castings push it down can you see that? Yeah, it's a little, just stop touching it because you're going to damage it more. There you go. It's fine on that side. Anyway, pretty cool. It's a casting that I don't necessarily collect from uh, Racing Champions, but it is a neat little van, and uh, it's got opening back doors. I'm not even going to bother with it. They're not aligned all that well, and I mean, they probably would open... All right, I'd probably get them closed all right, but we're just not even going to bother. We're just going to leave them shut like that because, uh, yeah, just frankly, I don't want to deal with it. All right, but pretty cool to check that one off the list of needs or wants or what have you, because I did want that one. That was one gold strike I did definitely want. I was glad to come across it at a cheap price. I believe I got that from the Hot Wheels convention. All right, Street Freaks, 76 Olds Cutlass. Street Freaks, uh, scraping, lowriders. Packaging is smashed. Get a little card. Some Johnny Lightning card. I got all these cards. I don't know. Is anybody interested in these cards? I should put these on eBay. Just put my whole pile of them on eBay and see what happens. Somebody will buy them. To me, it's just more stuff. I don't need to collect. I have too much stuff already. All right, I like this casting. Looks pretty cool as a low rider, bro. And uh, this one has a, a metal base. Plastic tires, plastic low rider tires. That was unexpected, but almost better that way because that way, look at those circles are circles. The white printing, 
Oh, no, pretty close to being actual circles. It's got to be easier to do that, though, on that than a soft rubber tire. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Add to the Johnny Lightning collection. Nice little details. Looks pretty good. Uh, the paint job is pretty neat. It's got like a, it's that white with like a silver. It's kind of cool. And green, white. Looks good. Low rider. Low rider. And then we got this in Pacific Blue, the 1989 Lotus Esprit. Now, I wish Auto World would do a Lotus Esprit. Or that Johnny or Lightning would redo this tooling. No offense to you, my friends. It's just this tooling has suffered. There, there is, it's proportionately not perfect, and that is forgivable. The, but the problem is, is that this back rear wheel well is always that gap is like crazy back there, and that just it looks so out of proportion. I want to love this car because I love this car. Like I love the Lotus Esprit. I'm a big fan of it. I think it's really cool. I think we do, however, need a good version of it in 164 scale from a brand such as like Auto World or Johnny Lightning. So either retool this or Auto World put it out in true 164 scale. And I will be happy. I would also like to see like Mini GT attempt to do this or do some Lotuses too. I don't think they do any Lotus, do they? I'm trying to think. They don't. They haven't done a single one, right? I'm looking. Yeah, Mini GT is not. They don't have a Lotus license, do they? Because they've never done one. I don't think they have. You guys let me know if I'm wrong, but uh, they should get that license then, huh? Uh, the best Lotus uh, Lotus I've ever had in my collection is a Kyosho, and uh, that can't be argued with. But uh, I really think that this uh, this 89 Lotus Esprit, come on, retool it. Just do it. Retool it if you can. I mean, if you have the licensing to do it, let's get another tooling license. Let's, let's uh, make one, like, perfect. What do you think about that? I think it'd be cool. I think people would like it. And I don't know, maybe this car sells good as it is. I don't have the sales numbers. I have no idea. But the cat, the tooling itself just leaves a little bit to be desired. It's not, it's not perfect. I think it could be done quite a bit better. I'm not saying I could do it better. I'm not a, I'm not a casting designer. Okay. But from my observation, I think that nowadays with Johnny Lightning, the way they're putting out toolings now, and the way that, you know, Auto Road does toolings, that company in general, I mean, they do fantastic work now. Everything looks just absolutely great. Why can't we just uh, we revamp some of these older models that uh, might have been slightly misses, okay? Uh, that's my opinion. All right, so we got a Volkswagen Beetle. This one's not to scale. It's, uh, it's another Johnny Lightning casting, you can see... Back in the day, for whatever reason, Hot Wheels, Johnny Lightning, whatever, whatever brand, they did not care about things being true to 164 scale. Nobody seemed to really care because nobody made things really in true to 164 scale. I don't know if we could say that the trend exactly started with Auto World, but as far as for uh, domestic brands go, yeah, I think so. Well, them and Greenlight, I guess, were the two companies that were really making things in, in 164 scale. And now the new Johnny Lightning toolings are going to be in 164 scale. We're starting to see stuff closer to real 164 scale. Even standard Hot Wheels, I would say. Um, a lot of the newer castings of licensed vehicles are getting pretty close to 164 scale at least some of them they do like are bang on so yeah i don't really care they don't need to redo a beetle necessarily because we have enough beetle castings but back in the day nobody really cared it seemed about doing 164 scale cars they just wanted to make it uh, all kind of relatively same size due to packaging and all that jazz two ways of thinking i suppose but pretty basic little beetle I think it's nice. I got a lot of Johnny Lightning Beetles in the collection. And then we got this last thing. Uh, 1972 Pontiac GTO in Monarch Yellow. Limited to 2,834 pieces. So still pretty limited for a Johnny Lightning. Muscle Cars USA. Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. 
It's a nice color. It's a pretty color. Would you open your hood? There we go. Just black under there. That was a waste of my time. <laughs> Green interior. Very cool. Roll is really nice. Yeah, let's see, this came out. This was manufactured in 2020. The casting itself, it's an older one, I think. 1998. Copyright date claim. Uh, really? 98? That seems way old. And this casting's done really well. Now, this is not 164 scale either. This car should be bigger. Um, slightly bigger. But uh, but very, very nice looking proportionally. So there you go. All right. And that's going to be it for this video. So I, honestly, the highlight for me is getting this off the list for this, this week. Of course, the Mini GT stuff is really cool. Um, that poster cars is really cool, but in general kind of an oddball week So let me know what you guys thought about this week's episode. Do you have any comments about the cars? I always read everything so please do leave a comment and uh, Yeah, uh, another long one for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Have a good day